this is the Sky Watcher uh, ATED uh, semi apochromatic telescope and uh, I'm using it with the uh, with the teleview 40 millimeter plus gives very good images the only thing is that sometimes it has slipped in the past used to because it's a Crayford focuser based on friction so I have to take it out and uh, smoothen up the underneath here where the friction contact between this wheel and the tube is the focuser tube is uh, established so it now works and uh, we can lock it also there is a locking mechanism this screw there beautiful telescope gives good views easy to manipulate of course uh, I have now tested this and I think my Lyra 102 F11 uh, has less chromatic aberration than this. This doesn't have much, but the clear clarity of image, brightness of the image and in the Lyra is equal or better than this. Surprise. The only f advantage this one has is short tube, shorter tube. It's easier to manage, easier to carry, easier to everything. So other than that, Lyra is better. So, nice telescope and of course beautiful. Uh, by the way, just to avoid the loss of the uh, eyepiece cap in the dark, I just use this to put it on where I don't need to put it all the time. When I'm observing, I don't need to. Um, it's indoors and but the caps get lost, so I don't want to risk that. This is expensive eyepiece. <laughs> the second hand even it is eighty pound. If you can, if you're lucky, eighty pound is more than that. One hundred ten pound probably. Good for bunny viewing. And this Dapsonium mount is a Sky Watcher flex tube. 130p that is really good uh, it's a folding telescope the dapsonium amount of it is really good it can take up to eight kilograms this is probably three kilogram or less even easily takes it an amazing piece of engineering is made in china beautiful better than the unitron which was made in the japan technology everything is transferred you know it's like a it's like a soul it's like a wind can go anywhere. Now the technology is in the Unitron is built in China. Look at this CNC machined, lovely tube rings, four inch, and it's all here. This is a Skywatcher uh, sixty by thirty, I think six by thirty. Uh, um, finder. I've I've adjusted it for here. Anyway, uh, this Takahashi, really good quality. I'm waiting a little bit. Uh, Venus comes out of the uh, leafy parts. And so I can actually go and uh, have observation without the leaves changing the, you know, the, from time to time they cause a little bit disturbance. So I'm waiting for that. But you can see the quality in the Takahashi. Like this. Beautiful offices. And this is a Vixen NPL 40 meter NLV 40 millimeter. And this is an Alta Prism, Alta Prism 2 inch diagonal prism. Really good for planetary work. So everything in this system that I have is perfect. Look at the size of these knobs. Dual. Uh, adjustment knobs. So really good. I'm looking forward to the rest of the session when the planet Venus passed from the tree so I can go and observe it. This is a Lyra 102 uh, F11 
telescope, refractor telescope. Um, it has some features which I'd like to mention. First of all, this is a long tube telescope. It's a chromatic telescope, but because it has a long focal length, uh, it's a doublet lens, of course, in front. Uh, practically, it acts and works like a upper chromat, meaning that there is no color uh, fringe or chromatic aberration, as we call it. The other feature of it is that beautiful, smooth feather touch uh, um, Crayford Dual Speed Focuser. That just on its own. It's a lot that's probably cost around 150 60 pound on its own. Then we come to the tube rings. These tube rings are CNC machined. The movements of this telescope and this Dobsonian mount is so smooth, it's because the weight is right for this. It's butter smooth. Perfect. Well, at the moment, we've got pretty clear evidence and advice from the four chief experts across the UK. Okay, we loosen up this screw and then the dust cap. Sorry, uh, the dew shield will come down. Let us go and have a look in the mirror and the lens. 102 millimeter of achromatic doublet lens. And that's the lens cap. Completely protected now. It goes back to this box. I will unscrew it from here. I remove the star diagonal. And that's it. That's what will be done. We get ready to do some more painting here in the coronavirus lockdown. I'm now uh, looking at the planet Venus with the Takashi multi-coated lung eye relief 7.5 millimeter 52 degrees eyepiece through the Lyra 102 F11 telescope refracted telescope and the image quality I was comparing with the Teleview Nagler 7 millimeter this is the original or as they call it tape 1 uh, Nagler uh, with the Takashi the horns of the crescent of the Venus is more visible the image with the Nagler is a little bit brighter and cleaner, but the clarity and the details I can see, sharp focus in this Takashi is better than this. Both of them are good, uh, just a slightly this is better. Uh, I can see the horns of the uh, crescent of the Venus clearer. And the lens looks almost identical in size. The eye relief of the Takashi, of course, is 20 millimeter. With this one, is uh, uh, 13 millimeter or 11 millimeter. The field of view of this is 82, and with this is 52. I don't feel that uh, that is affecting the view as much as I expected. A tad better in this, although it's not as bright as of, as of the Nagler, Teleview Nagler. But the clarity and the sharpness of the focus is better. This telescope, of course, I have to show that is a feather touch uh, dual speed Crayford um, focuser. That is 10 to 1. So 10 turn of this equals to 1 turn of this. 
and uh, yeah I'm really impressed both of them are good uh, with this one I could even look 2.3.2 and I could get an image but the image was very uh, swiftly moving this is an, an Dobsonian mount for the Skull Watcher Skymax 130 flex tube and anyway I'm continuing to observe and I think Takashi a tad slightly an epsilon better than the Nagler.